Saskatchewan, you know Sastel because we're everywhere. Because being everywhere keeps us connected to you. With Sastel sponsorships, we get to be part of your community. We're here with you and we're here for you. It's easy to get started. All you need to do is apply. Sastel cares. Always has, always will. To apply for sponsorship, visit sastel.com slash sponsorships. Good evening, everybody. Welcome here to the Action in Swift Current Saskatchewan, the IG Wealth Management Western Showdown, matchup between Kevin Cooey and John Epping. My name is Matt Sussman, and I'm here with Jeff Chambers. And uh, Jeff, we've got a couple skips that know each other pretty well. Uh, the teams are getting used to each other as well, so what do you expect for a matchup such as this? Well, I have a feeling we're going to see a really close game. Uh, that's been a, the tendency for, for Team Cooey. They're ready to get into action, and, and they're not afraid to take it right down to the last end and, and count on that last rock. And and uh, with the skill level between Epping Team and Cooey here, uh, I think we're going to see some fireworks. You can see right off the bat they're uh, – they're not afraid to get rocks into play. So I think it's going to be a pretty uh, pretty interesting game for all the viewers out there. And uh, everybody that's come to Swift Current to, to watch the show is going to be pretty impressed by these two uh, powerhouses going at it tonight. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of familiarity between these two skips. They've battled over the entire decade. So we've already got a couple center guards lined up here. Yeah, Team Cooey, uh, well, Kevin himself, no stranger to this event. He's the past champion of it. Obviously, his team looks a little bit different this year. Uh, but from the games that I've been watching here out here, uh, uh, he, he's been in some battles and uh, he's been coming through. And and uh, the Epping team has been really strong and uh, they figured out the ice. The ice has been fantastic for a lot of curl. Um, the teams figured that out real early on that uh, it, it's basically, well, as you can see with this one, this was way outside the 12 foot at one point there. And by the time it got there, it almost made it to uh, the center line behind those guards. So the guys are getting some uh, really good ice conditions, especially for club curling, which you expect to go straighter. But they've uh, sharpened the stones and the Jason Broughton and his ice crew have done an amazing job giving them... Um, well, top level curling ice so that the, the big guns can show off the big shots. Absolutely. I think this is going to be really good conditions for a lot of shots made as you see a takeout attempt here as that come around didn't quite come around. So, Team Cooey. Throwing the yellow stones, I believe they have the last rock, winning the uh, draw to the button. So, Team Cooey, this, this was a triple knockout format, and so you basically had to not lose three games. Both of these teams only lost one game, so they've both had a lot of success. And, uh, you know, with this being the quarterfinals, you, you got to win this one. Absolutely. This is uh, do or die time now. So it's just you want to take it as deep into the event as you can. And so, they again, they won't be holding anything back here. We're going to see some pretty neat angle shots. Uh, last night, uh, Kevin Cooey made the highlight reel. They took on Team Laycock. And in the first time, uh, or in the first end, sorry, um, Kevin Cooey made two unbelievable doubles. Uh, totally different ways of doing it and uh, scored a five ender to start the game and team Laycock had played 90% that end it just you know like the, he's looking for the big shots and uh, when he gets them you, you just don't want to leave him because he's gonna he's gonna take advantage of them They're a beautiful hit and roll there now and 
And uh, so that'll change up things for, for John. So he's going to have a look at that. He might want to play that uh, double up tap up. It's pretty close. So imagine we're going to see some kind of run back here, which he's given the sign for. Yeah, that was a good hit and roll by Brad Thiessen. As you know, um, a lot of these teams, basically all of the teams, shuffled their lineup somewhat. So if you recognize the faces, but you're not entirely sure why they're with those teams, I think it's going to take some getting used to for all of us. But uh, Team Cooey, that is uh, Brad Thiessen at second, Carrick Martin at lead with Tyler Tardy at third. And then for Team Epping, Matthew Cam, who's been very familiar with him for over the years, is uh, at third. And then Patrick Jansen and Scott Chadwick will be the front end for him. So a lot of names we've all seen, and they've all come together here. And we're going we're gonna to watch a good one. Absolutely. They're going to go for shot for shot now. They're, John was hoping to stick around a little bit to have a couple corners. And they are corner guards, but just way to the far outside. So... We'll see some shot exchanges between them, and and if they leave an open draw, they're going to try to hide one in behind. But otherwise, we're we're looking at uh, a blank end. But as you can see, a lot of curl on these rocks. These guys are positioning it really well, and it was just another beautiful hit and roll. Just about got all the way over to the side. So, yeah, those I guess are technically corner guards. They yeah they very well might come into play. Touching a piece, but uh, sometimes that's all you need to to cause a fuss out there. It's just. Uh, just hide a piece of those rocks. So with this being the quarterfinals, we are broadcasting games on all of the sheets here. So the playoff teams in the other sheets, we have uh, Team Adine, which is being skipped by Oscar Erickson. Uh, Adine, I believe, is nursing an injury, so he is not uh, playing with him this weekend. But uh, Team Adine, is playing against uh, Team Slachinski. Then you have Team Flash, Colton Flash, against uh, Young Suk Jong. And then Team uh, Jack Gauthier against Team Rylan Clyder. So those are our eight uh, teams, but uh, you are free to watch any of those. But uh, I have a personal bias. I'd rather you watch this game with us. <laughs> Yeah, so some great action going on out there, and uh, you just can't go wrong with, with the guys that are playing here right now. And, and Swift Current's very fortunate. Uh, we're a small community here, uh, 16,000 people, and to, to have a, a rink like this and, and uh, a curling ice, uh, we're, we're just so fortunate here. And, and to have the world's best join us, and it's, uh, it's been a regular occurrence the last couple of weeks. Uh, we've had, uh, two weeks ago, we had the, the Ladies Western Showdown, and teams from all over the world, including the world number one here in Zoni rink was here and uh, which won the event. And so we've been very fortunate to, to be able to, uh, to get such high level teams right here to little swift current and uh, they've enjoyed themselves. The hospitality has been great for them. Um, lots of them were up staying afterwards. The Adeem team was taking pictures, showing off the, the gold uh, Olympic medals and uh, just, just, great guys and and yeah nicholas unfortunately isn't here he got the op uh, an opportunity to head back for an operation for his knee uh, as he suffered an injury in the last event so we hope he's doing well and i know he'll want to get back as soon as he can and his guys are doing pretty darn good so far undefeated uh, as a 3-0 so we'll see if fatigue gets to them uh, that's a that's a lot of pressure on that one sweeper but uh, they seem to be doing pretty good so far <laughs> Oh, so they're playing with just three, is that correct? Yeah, they're playing three-handed for the entire event. Oh, man. I could do it for a game, but I don't know about an entire weekend, especially against this competition. Yeah, they they, they finished off last weekend at the the last um, the slam event, and they and they won that with just the three of them. Uh, so they're they're uh, they're not afraid to go at it again. But uh, at some point, that uh, the front end, uh, the poor lead there, he's. He's working it. He has to work both sides of the sweeper. So, well, here's an opportunity that we talked about before, just trying to tuck a piece and, and make it a little bit more difficult. And so now we've got to make a decision on chasing that because if you do come up, then you could lose a, a deuce real quick. So he's going to make sure he hits this out and concede to a blank end, or he's going to hope to anyway. Just going to control gotcha. his weight a little bit here. 
Yeah. So Jeff, this is the first game you've done with me, but there's there's the uh, apparently a curse that carries with me. Anytime I say it's looking like a blank, uh, <laughs> it tends to not be a blank. So um, you're gonna have to be careful what you say. <laughs> I, I I've stopped saying it's looking like a blank. You can say it all you want, but um, in this case, yeah, Jonathan attempt to. Uh, hit what he can see and, and roll away a little bit, possibly stay in play. Uh, shot is certainly there for him, though. Yeah, if it wasn't the first end and the guys had a better feel for the ice and really could trust it, you would uh, you might see a corner freeze here in this situation. Um, but with being the first end, uh, weight's not for sure, especially going outside. So they're going to play this a little safe, play it with weight, and uh, just make sure they get rid of it. And, like I said, allow Kevin to uh, to attempt for the uh, the hit and roll. Yeah, nice share, nice shot, shot there by John, and he does stay in play. So the attempt to roll back around uh, or come around the corner is not there for him. So I'm not saying it's looking like anything, but <laughs> he has an open shot here. really nice to see the rink so full here too uh, gives the locals an opportunity uh, you can see in the background they filled up the, the lower seats and the best seating is upstairs in our lounge uh, where they have a couple couple different risers up there as well um, but uh, yeah it's a full crowd uh, enjoying the show of a, a couple big teams here playing so and looks like we got a successful blank we do now that we can say that oh i guess there's two more rocks to come sorry i was thinking that was kevin's last one so oh John, well that would have been a successful blank attempt right yeah absolutely i thought the curse was over for you but hey you know there's still a shot here so john might try to see if he can hide this one on make it a little tricky on uh, kevin's last one yeah i think that uh that 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 cooey stone rolled far enough that I don't think there's any jam potential here. I think he just definitely needs to get this as far under as he can, as little biting as possible. So this will be John Epping's final stone. Looking for the T line. And that is going to come up light. So it's looking like a blank, Jeff. I'm pretty sure it's safe to say now, Matt. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I'm okay saying that too. This will yeah. just be a nice throw through. So pick a spot you don't know or don't know that well see what it does yeah so he's not just going to check this he still wants to have a look at it they're going to have a look to see how it uh, runs down this line just in case they need it for later and we're off and running into uh, into the second end we absolutely are nothing nothing Kui will hold on the hammer after the first here in swift current
ask questions about if our houses are painted or are they logo. Our events are always painted houses, but in the future coming out, I'm pretty sure we're going to be going to all logo houses. Uh, they're a great revenue source for any trilling club. You can get your advertisements on there. And usually after the first year, the houses are paid for it's all free money for you. So hopefully check it, check Jet Ice out for your future in-house flow. So the second end here between Team Cooley and Team Epping in Swift Current. I'm Matt Sussman along with Jeff Chambers. We had a blank in the first end, which gave us plenty of time for a lot of exposition for the game, but now we've got some usable rocks in play here. Yeah, we've definitely seen a trend. Uh, the players really like to go after the, the points or the steals. Um, they like to score on the even ends is what we really we notice. It doesn't always work out this plan, but what we'll typically see in the odd ends is a little safer play. And then the even ends, we'll, we'll see them put the hammer down. And you can see the aggressiveness by putting up a center guard and a corner guard. And now they're coming in, but now they'll try to position their rocks and get just the right kind of rolls and uh, see if they can press. As Kui would love to take a multiple score end, and, and uh, right now John would love to take a steal. We've got Karik Martin here throwing his seconds. Looking for a little hit and roll action. It's fantastic sweeping, holding that rock in there. And and uh, these uh, one thing is that we've really noticed and, and the fans have noticed is the uh, the amount of speed and pressure that uh, so many of these teams are doing now with the uh, in the sweeping world. It's a lot different than your club curling where everybody's out there and they just give a little sweep every once in a while. Like these guys are working hard and when they lean down, they're not afraid to. So even there, you see an example, he's just, he was cleaning the rock and he was still leaning on that thing. And now we're going to take the outside guy and uh, just try to get some extra curl out of that and roll, go into the open, but good solid shot. Absolutely. A lot of technique, a lot of, don't try this at home, although that doesn't stop some people from trying really hard. Um, but yeah, all of the different techniques that evolve from year to year, all the different angles at which the broom heads are being placed, it is fascinating to watch it all, and it certainly leads to a lot of team shots, basically every shot being a team shot. Absolutely. Uh, it's now in the old days, you would just watch it go. Well, here is a uncharacteristic miss there. That was um, that was set quite a bit outside. So, not sure if something got under there. Um, normally, we don't see a miss that big, but um, looks like he's not happy with himself. So, it might have been just something in the release on that one, and that'll change things up now and get a couple extra rocks into play. Absolutely. With the miss going wide, opportunity here for Patrick to split the house, use the center guard that they've placed. That's real key here that they they don't want to get all the way to the T-line to allow a hit and roll over. So I'm going to uh, try to get this about top four and as buried as they can, but this one's traveling on them. So we're going to see where this ends up. It's going to definitely end up further back than they planned on. Trying to place the brakes there. That's undercover, but it is back four, back eight. So it is not an ideal position. They are sitting two. A chance here for Brad to atone for one miss by cleaning up. Looks like the uh, call is being made for hitting shot stone and possibly rolling over a little bit, but it looks like it's going to roll the other way. And the second shot.
So still a chance for John to add some pressure here in the second end as Kevin Cooey got the blank he was looking for, has control in an even end. It is the second end, but sometimes it, that early in the game dictates when a, when a team is in control, as we saw, as I saw at least on Friday, when Team Cooey did lose their, their sole game, it was simply a matter of not having the hammer and not ever able to get control of the game. Yeah, that's why a big part uh, in the ends, they, they want to score in those even ends. And in a perfect world, they'd just be able to go back and forth and till right to the end. But uh, as we know, uh, there's always a sidebar in curling. Uh, but uh, that's why you'll definitely see them. Everybody wants to score in those even ends to see if they can control the, the pace of the game. Here's a good example of aggressiveness, as you would probably mostly see most teams trying to do an automatic trying to double or hit and roll in front. Um, he's just elected. We're just he's just going to corner freeze this and get right on it right off the bat. So it's just forced the issue a little bit. Looks like he's pretty close. The communication between them, saying that they're uh, they're pretty close where they want to be. Now they're trying to hold us. You can see it's really taking a curl. And this is a lot more curl than what you're going to see at uh, normal club curling level. This is more like arena ice, the way they're they're getting it to curl. So that's why these guys will become very comfortable with it as they go. I'm kind of surprised because they it's been pretty consistent right through. Uh, I'm not sure if they papered the rocks again, but uh, there's definitely a lot of action out there. So once they get onto that, it's going to be pretty fun shots to watch. Yeah, yeah, that rock there did overcurl a lot, but if you look at where it landed, it's actually not a terrible spot. It's still, uh, the call is to, to freeze on it here for Matt. No, it actually worked out very nicely, and uh, uh, Kevin was definitely not worried about that overcurling because got into that uh, shot rock, and then there's, if you go after it, it's an automatic jam, basically. So they're going to try to get another one around there, and... and uh, create a situation that will make Kevin think. Now they, the sweepers are, are uh, backing right off this, which will mean it's heavy right off the bat. They're trying to let it, as we say, junk up a little bit and try to catch some of the fresh stuff. And you can see it coming down now. And it's going to end up in a really good spot. So big time patience there. And you can see that's just a little bit better than um, edge on edge. So to go after that, it has to be very precise. Uh, there is enough curl there that he can get to the nose with, with some bump back weight, which there's the call from Kevin there. Just going with the back line, maybe, maybe even a hack, but they should be able to get to nose still on that one. Absolutely. We, as we see a lot of rocks in play here, just like we expected, all across the sheet. Three of the four games have been blank ends in the first, with the exception of the Gautier Clyder game. Uh, team Gautier forced to a single in the first. So this this even ended mentality with with last rock is it's catching on for sure. Absolutely. So the lefty youngster Tyler Tardy tasked with a soft weight tap on this partially buried redstone. Easton on this pretty hard. Now Carrick's going to take over and get the last minute curl on just a beautiful shot to get that angle there. And that does the job and all of the upping stones are now behind the T-line. I believe Cooey is now sitting one at the moment. So that aggressiveness to change gears and not try to blank or or any of that. Now Kui is suddenly set up looking like they might be able to score their two here or more. Yeah, in this situation, it's uh, you're looking at it and you definitely want to hit something. You want to hit those yellows. You don't want them stacking up in front of the, the T line like that. So he was looking first at possibly was there some kind of freeze or looking at the angles. It is a pretty good jam on that center one uh, when they're hitting it back, but it, it could roll over the top of that red one. So he had a good look at that first. Uh, now they're getting a, a look from the front end, looking at the other end. What we're gonna also see, um, and 
almost for sure in this game that it's going to be a little bit longer than than most. They're they're not on a time clock out there. So what they do is they get to discuss quite a bit of things. And uh, well, Kevin's pretty famous for liking to discuss with with teams, and uh, he's always close on the time clock. So when he's allowed not to be on the time clock, he'll uh, he'll definitely be taking advantage of that. So. We're going to see a lot of discussion amongst the whole team where we're normally we're getting in the hack and throwing. So we had a good discussion here, but John's pretty sure he knows what he wants to do. I didn't see the original call. But he's now they're talking about no, changing their mind. So I think there was a little miscommunication there. Like I said, I at first I know John was looking at that angle and seeing if he could spin that over the top. Now, well, it's certainly, like I said, it's only the second end. However, there is a chance that if you don't deal with any of these stones that Kevin's going to find a way to score, maybe more than two. I think that might be what he's worried about here. Yeah, I think they're looking at that angle. They're going to take that shot rock and see if they can get... You could probably get pretty close to the nose just off. Uh, if you get to the nose, it could jam. On, it will jam on that back red one. So they're going to try to hit a little bit of angle and angle it through those two red rocks in the back of the house and uh, just sit open, which most likely Kevin will use that to try to do a hit and roll. But uh, we'll see how he makes out first before we get too, too ahead of ourselves. Here's John Eppings first Looking for controlled weight hit on shot stone, but this needs to curl a lot. He got this one out there. They're they're curling it. It's coming in hard, but it's going to jam on the other side. So that's a, a big miss there that uh, could really come back and haunt him. As Kevin will have a good opportunity to be sitting three three after this shot. And with the hammer, that's not something that John wants to see with only one rock left. So he'll be looking at uh, Kevin's making sure that he doesn't put a rock into play that uh, he could lose or make uh, set up a double. For John, he uh, would really like to take his three. So he's going to talk this one out and, and see if he can come up with a good spot to, to try to hide it. Yeah, a lot of discussion, a lot of uncertainty on that last shot. You get down to the hack, you look at it even further away. Sometimes the shot looks even worse. You know, you thought the angle was there, and then you can't visualize it from the hack. I think there was just a lot of uh, maybe some second guessing, maybe some hesitation on the shot there. Yeah, I don't think they. Uh, I think that when they call them back down there that they put a little bit of doubt in there he did say like let's go after this but uh he just kind of started outside a little bit just set it out a little bit too much and they couldn't quite get it to curl at the end so now they're uh the, the first discussion that i saw here i thought we might see a little bit of a hit and roll just to even though that red rock is third rock maybe to access the angle to get in there a little bit better but it looks like Kevin's decided he just wants to go with the straight draw here, and he's just going to try to line them up, better known as the Christmas tree, where you just show a little piece of everyone. And from this angle, you can see that does not look like much space at all, but uh, we've seen Kevin pull off shots um, like this many times, so he's not afraid to basically try to place this perfectly for himself. Here's Kevin's first. Looking to Christmas tree it up a little bit. It already is Christmas tree, but just looking for another present under the tree. This is pretty darn close, Matt. This is close. I want this to curl and then said, look at this shot. So it's bending in there. Yeah, I, I think the uh, it, it came up a little shorter than they're expecting. That it was coming in on a good angle, and I think that surprised the sweepers a little bit because they're giving the indication that the weight was good. But uh, if they would have taken that another even six inches, uh, the the double would have been extremely tough. But now, now he's definitely showing enough, and 
and John will make the double here and, and uh, not so worried about uh, losing two as uh, losing three. So let's see. Yeah, this might be his out to just give up two in this second end. So that is last looking for the double. Successful throw. And sitting shot rock. So now Kevin will have to make that disappear to get his deuce. So very good end by Kevin Cooey. He capitalized on a on a miss and set up a bunch of rocks and play. John did make a really nice shot in his last to limit some damage here, but Kevin Cooey now just needing a hit and stick in the eight foot for two. Yes, at this level, if you make mistakes, uh, you can be punished pretty quick. So in that end, uh, John had uh, team had two misses. So to only lose a, a two, and it's it's not even guaranteed yet. Uh, oh, it's outside here, so they've got to make this curl a little bit. Looks like it's going to come in nicely. So, um, so to only lose two after two mistakes, I think uh, they'll uh, be able to rebound from that and and think that that's all right. Absolutely, right in the nose for two points. Kevin Cooey takes a two nothing lead into the third end. I've been raised on the farm since day one, so you know, I was born into it. My grandfather came in here in 1905. I want to continue the farm for him and generations to come. So. I think it's a privilege that we get to be here. It's just a wonderful way of life. You know, what job is there that you can go to work with your dad and brother, with your kids by your side? Doesn't get much better than that. Hey, wake up. There's so much out there to see. Look up. Look down. Quick, look over there. Look for a little trouble, but not too much. Open your eyes to something new every day. The hustle, the bustle, the calm, the serene. Maybe then you'll see that sometimes you have to go far to get a little closer. So wake up. The day is far from over. Seize the days. Sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. And we're here in the third end. The IG Western Wealth, sorry, IG Wealth Management Western Showdown. The quarterfinal game between Team Epping and Team Cooey. I'm Matt Sussman and Jeff Chambers is along with us. And Jeff, we just watched a few misses lead to a nice score of two here by uh, Kevin Cooey. Yeah, just a couple of icing and maybe a release uh, missed by the Epping team and and uh, Cooey took advantage of that and had a wide open shot for his last one to get his is two so now we're back in action and and uh, kevin went in like we'll normally see trying to get top four and now they're going to typically place a tight guard onto that one and john made no mistake he's going to get up his corner and he's making a statement that he's going to bounce back and go aggressive here in the third end so we'll see what happens with these shots and, and i mentioned earlier that both of these skips are very familiar with one another even though Many of their teammates have changed over the years. Um, according to Curling Zone, they keep track of all of the head-to-head -head matchups between the skips. And I looked this one up, and I had to laugh. 
Team uh, or Kevin Cooey and, and and John Epping have matched up against each other as skips 52 times in the last looks like since 2011. That is a lot of games. Uh, Kevin Cooey winning 32 of those 52 games. So I just say if you've ever played anyone 52 times, you would know a lot about it. Yeah, there's not going to be too many shocks. Uh the way they call the games and uh, the way they they conduct themselves out there. You're, you're right, you, you know what's coming and, and uh, that's, that's a lot of games. That's a, that's a neat stat to have. And uh, yeah, they're, they're, they know what to expect. And, and as you said, the, the amount of curling teams that have switched, uh, switched players this year, typically in that Olympic cycle, um, it's pretty mind blowing to keep track of everybody. Uh, we all recognize the faces. It's just uh, sweeping and playing for different guys. So, and Kui is no stranger uh, to to Swift Current. Uh, he was the past champion of this event last year uh, with his prior team, and uh, we're just happy that, uh, that Epping made the trip with his crew to to come battle it out. And that's why we got a big uh, big game here tonight to be able to watch right here in Swift Current, thanks to the curling zone. Yeah, absolutely. So we have a bunch of yellow in the house. So if uh, John Epping was looking for an opportunity to set up a good end here, so far he's got some work to do. Absolutely. This is going to be a fine tune. He just has to basically redirect. He just wants to get that yellow rock in the center into the open and then just kind of roll over to that one on the side just to try to get some granite in front of granite. I'm trying this to make Patrick, this curl. Patrick Jansen throwing this rock. Patrick Jansen was previously, if you sort of recognize the face, he was the alternate and then replacement for Darren Molding on Team Botcher. So he is playing against his former teammates in this game. Being Brad Thiessen and Karak Martin. Yes, there was some big change-ups in Alberta, for sure. Well, there was everywhere, but uh, especially in Alberta. And th those teams and players went through a lot of uh, a lot of difficulties, and and uh, the fan bases were were pretty tough on on the guys with the change with Darren Molding and the and the change-ups. So uh, it's good to see everybody found their spot now, and everybody's just concentrating on curling. And so hopefully. They all can have uh, good seasons, and they've they've found the teams that they're going to uh, blend well with. That's a, yellow, a lot of yellow rocks. We're going to have to get our sunglasses out soon if they don't replace some of these yellow rocks. <laughs> a little bit of Corey Hart action wearing your sunglasses at night. Yeah. yeah. When you're the red rocks, you never want it to be that bright in the house. That's right. So the team's just roll. struggling to get the, the line they want. Yeah, a little hit and roll there, but uh, they're just having trouble getting the rocks to the right spot. So not sure if it's an icing thing or the bodies are getting a little sore, but uh, just not as sharp as what we'll normally see these, these curlers and their percentages. So we'll see if they can figure out if it's the ice or just maybe a little bit of release or... By this time of the event, uh, Matt, we also see the fatigue sitting in, especially on the, the nightly draw. They've already played today. Um, it uh, the bodies the bodies can take a beating. Yeah, especially with what they do. I mean, we all play in bond spiels, but we all don't exert that much energy. Usually, by the time you get to Sunday, you've got one game and you're already driving driving home. These guys are playing on a Sunday night and it's the quarterfinals. So there's still a lot more ahead of them, even if they continue to win and the, and the competition's only going to get better after this. Yes. It's uh, being an athlete is a very, very important thing. Uh, you just don't get out there and throw the rock and put the odd sweep in. These guys train hard, uh, get their bodies into great physical shape because it is uh, pretty grueling. Anybody that has not, done it uh they, sh they should get out there and and try it out uh it's it's amazing how hard on the body it is especially when you're putting so much effort in as these sweeps as 
here's a good example. These two guys are not messing around right now. They are putting some serious PSI into that uh, curling ice and making those grooms move. So uh, it's pretty fantastic what's what's happened in the past few years and, and the importance of sweeping and, and the front ends to make the, the great shots, learning how to curl the rocks in, how to hold them straight, um, et cetera. So it's becoming a big science along with having to be in pretty good shape. That's an example of a good shot right there. I don't think you can get much closer to the center than Matthew Cam uh, doing what that one was. That's completely undercover. And Kevin now having to try to pick it out with uh, Tyler Tardy here on third stones. Really good ex um, experience for for Tyler, he's a very established skip at such a or a player at such a young age, and to to be able to play uh, third and and for Kevin, that's uh, he's going to learn so much about uh, more on the game, and and uh, it's just crazy bright future for that uh, for Tyler for sure. Absolutely wonderful opportunity for him is he does make the shot, digs it out, flops out, and he's uh, give his team a, a sitting three all spread out and again this is an opportunity to give another shout out to um, our ice makers that are making such great ice uh, as you know um, in regular club curling you saw how buried that rock was in uh, regular club curling and uh, curling club rinks you're you're not able to get like you got to three quarters of that stone and uh, that's just because of the great ice making that uh, jason broughton and his crew does here uh, in Swift Current and, and has championship ice. Um, it's, it's just such a blessing here for uh, the locals to be able to curl on stuff like this. And and uh, these guys, uh, I know when they showed up and they had their first practice, uh, they couldn't believe how much curl they could get with the rocks because you're just not expecting that unless you're playing in the arena ice. Absolutely. Although I should say we have a good ice maker at our club too. But that's not the reason I couldn't make that shot. <laughs> it was probably the sweepers, Matt. <laughs> it was the sweepers, yeah. It was, it was that. It, you, you got it exactly here. <laughs> They're just not like these athletes, you know? So, looking at so a bunch of yellow here. Yeah, John's ignoring uh, the yellows now. It's uh, There's a lot there, but with the hammer, he's... He knows that there's, uh, I would say, no chance for a blank. So they're going to uh, get as aggressive as they can, see if they can finally hide a rock. And, and one thing that's very difficult is hiding a rock, especially from the Kui team. You can see this poked out. So uh, even though it only shows half a rock, uh, they'll be pretty confident if they come down there with hack to bumper, that they can almost get to the nose so that there's uh, there's no jams there. So, and then they'll be sitting three and uh, John will be in a world of trouble. Yeah, at this point, I think John will be happy to score if he can. Um, nose hit, like you said, would certainly close down that entire path to score. Leaving some type of desperation shot or very precise shot to get his one. But he still has two left, and Kevin throwing his first here, looking to poke that red out as much as he can. There's Kevin Cooey's first. Sweeper's guiding it down nicely. You can see the frustration, uh, Matt, in the background there, Matthew. He's uh, He knows that they missed an opportunity there. It, it, it was probably a little bit of a missed throw. And, and like I said, you just can't get away with not perfectly hiding a rock against this team. They're going to find it. And now they're, like I said, in a little bit of trouble. The yellow's got lots to tap back. So to try to generate a skips deuce here, uh, very, very difficult. So, 
he hasn't given up the thought. You all, you never give up the thought of trying to find a way to get to, but it's going to be very, very difficult for him to do that now. Now we'll see a yeah. little attempt at a hit and roll towards the center. Just to make it a little more tough for Kevin and make him think about it and get rid of one of the rocks in the forefoot. Yeah, even if he doesn't hit and roll and he just rolls maybe a foot so that he, the, the hit and roll isn't there back, then Kevin hits that and then he's got to draw to the forefoot for his single. So here is John Epping's first stone. Looking to at least hit and stick. They're wanting this to curl, so they're on this hard, trying to trying to get the extra curling action towards the middle. Scott Chadwick looking to push it over, and he does just nose it. So there is. It's very tempting for Kevin to try to make that hit and roll himself, and then that, that would basically close the button up. Yeah, there's something to be said here, possibly for just hitting right on the nose as well. I think that they would have had a look like the hit and roll is there and force them into the draw. Uh, but if you hit right on that nose, um, if John came down, he would have to get some sort of an inside roll, and that's not easy to do. So, yeah, that's what they're giving a look. Tyler's saying that right now, saying, you know, do we need to roll it or should we sit right there? And that would make it extremely difficult for uh, for John. He'd have to get some kind of inside roll off that, uh, that one that you can see through those two rocks. Absolutely. Let's see how hard Kevin can make it for John for his last stone. Tyler's eyeing this up big time, making the last minute call. You know if they're going between the two sweepers that they're really close to the call they want. So here we saw the nose, and like I said, that makes it very tough for, for John. He needs some sort of inside roll there, and it's almost edge on edge there. So um, he just threw down this line, so he'll choose to take the same side. And uh, he just saw it, so he's pretty confident in it. But still, you have to have to get that inside roll to get shot here. Absolutely. There might be an opportunity on the on the right yellow, but since he is not familiar with that path and he just threw this, he knows what it does. He's seen it a lot. This is what he believes to be the easiest path for a point. Final stone of the third end. For a hit, an inside roll. Sweepers are back and forth. It's pretty close. It's really going to hook on him at the end. It's going to want to hold this. It should roll into the other ones. To the right side, and that's got to stop, and it does. So nice little shot for John Epping to limit the damage, and he will be on the board, but Kevin Cooley will have the lead and the hammer going into the fourth end.
Sastel Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? Sastel can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. Sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. We're now in the fourth end here, between Team Curry and Team Epping. This is the quarterfinal game here. And uh, Jeff, we just saw uh, John make a very precarious shot on his last uh, to limit the not only limit the damage, but actually score a point. Yeah, that was a pretty fantastic shot. It's uh, He made that look pretty easy with the rolling, but uh, I can assure you it was anything but easy. Uh, he had the same side. Uh, Kevin wanted to roll over a little bit more with his shooter to make it tougher, but uh, still was in a great spot. And like I said, John was facing three and he had to make a beautiful hit roll and he did. So that uh, hopefully will get the troops going a little bit. They've had trouble getting the broom down in the right spot and getting the rocks placed. So maybe that uh, will be a little bit of a, a bump in the adrenaline for them. and. They can get their their rocks in there to put some pressure on Kui. So far, it's been pretty much all Team Kui. That's right. If you look around the sheet here, uh, all the sheets. We have uh, Dean and Sluchinski, and Nadine has a one nothing lead. That's in the fourth. Team Young Suk Jung against Team Colton Flash. That's also a nothing team in favor of Team John. And then uh, Team Gautier and Team Kleider, that is a 3 nothing advantage for Team Gautier. As they scored one in the first and stole two in the second. So, a lot of close games. And it's got to be really nice for all of those fans there that are able to just go from game to game, just turn your neck a little bit and see another shot made, another shot made. Uh, very exciting stuff. Absolutely. Here in Swift Current, we're very fortunate to have uh, this event here. Chris Eichert's been instrumental in, in lining up these events, and we had this last year, and it was great to see the uh, the fans out and just the, the, the greatness in curling, and, and the players appreciated that, and they, they came back again. And to, to have this big event here, it's, it's pretty fantastic. And then, of course, if you're not able to be here, we've got people all around the world watching. Uh, it's pretty fantastic. Thanks to the the Curling Stadium and, and the Curling Zone for, for putting on some great shows here. And and uh, obviously the sponsors, IG Wealth Management, uh, this Western Showdown, uh, they take a lot of pride. Um, I've met the sponsors, Candace with the sponsors. They've been on hand to watch this and uh, they just said, we got to be part of this. Uh, they just love having such unbelievable talent right here in, in Swift. And I mean, we had the Olympic gold medals last night that you could take a picture with thanks to Team Adine. So um, just just a fantastic event and, and people appreciate it, especially in the smaller cities. Absolutely. Just a lot of fun, I have to imagine. A lot of fun for Team Cooey, though. They're just loading up the house with uh, Yellowstones again, which is very similar to what we saw in the second and the third and now here in the fourth yeah so john will be getting a little worried as uh there's a lot of yellow but without last rock he's got to figure out a way to get some red ones he's got a lot of coverage out front which uh, definitely goes in favor for him he's he does have three uh red guards out front so if he can start trying to get some behind there and hiding um that's all you need is that one to to stay hidden to uh save an entire end and this is sort of John Epping style. He really does like to, he sort of does have the reputation of being a bit of a, a riverboat gambler, if you will, to uh, live on the edge a little bit, try to you know, force the issue. And this might be a little more uncomfortable than that you'd want, especially given the, the competition. But um, looks like the chance here to 
Maybe hit and roll. Might be a little wide for his liking, but he's shot for now. Again, the guys at uh, Team Epping just struggling, getting the rocks in the, the right place. They're, they're making shots, but uh, what we would call half shots, basically hitting the rocks or getting the draws, similar spots, but just not getting the 100% shot where you're getting the rolls and you're getting hidden behind the guards. So they're, uh, they're going to have to figure something out here and, and tighten it up a little bit. Um, or they're going to run or find that they uh, they they run out of time and space if uh, Kevin keeps his uh, dominating uh, role going here. And this looks like a pretty obvious call is hit the open stone, but um, are they worried that it's just going to roll back button and leave a freeze? Well, that's exactly right. You can't hit it and roll to the outside. Right now, Kevin would do that if he could. Uh, but the only place to put that is hit it on the nose or get an inside roll. And when you're going for the inside roll, it would be to the back button. And then with all that coverage, John would be able to draw in there and not only bury his shooter, but to have backing as well. So uh, they're going to take that path away from him. They're just trying to get into top four. I imagine somewhat buried, but uh, just mostly getting their rock in front of the T-line because uh, it's uh, you get a rock frozen to one on the back four and it's, it's very difficult to get out. That's a really interesting situation there as, you know, the previous shot looked like it was half made and it led to sort of a changing of the gears, if you will, for, for Kevin Cooley to roll another one in there that could potentially be used but it is a yellow rock and as it comes in looking so to get yeah so just like i was there. saying there, just trying to draw get it half buried top four take away that spot but now their yellow one is there and uh it just shows a lot of patience because they're they weren't even trying to get shot rock out of that as you saw and they're leaving it there but that's just showing patience by a, a veteran skip uh, most people would go, oh my God, let's get a hit and roll and sit four. Uh, but he knew that that wasn't the play. And, and uh, just that's what uh, the fans are, are going to be really loving because everybody was expecting, oh yeah, that'll be a hit and roll for sure. But uh, he's thinking ahead. It's a, it's, a, it's a good chess game going on and, and uh, Kevin's in control right now. So yeah, now this forces John Epping. Looks like he's going to try to also tap this back a little bit. Maybe not remove it, but create some type of pocket. Yeah, that's exactly right, Matt. So he's going to try to come in there, hit most of what he can see. But they were only calling for back eight weight. Um, they just want to knock this to the back four, just so that they have something uh, basically kind of as a wall. Looks like it's going to be pretty successful. Might have tapped that a little further than they wanted, which they did. They just wanted to go to... Uh, back four to create a pocket but still a good shot and gets their rocks in front of that T line and um, we're just going to see some back and forth action and should be a very interesting last couple shots here Matt at this end absolutely love of play certainly has gone up last couple ends now with both teams getting very familiar and this is really the first end where team Epping looks like they might be in some type of control situation <laughs> Yes, they definitely got them thinking now. They got to figure out. Uh, they're right now. They're planning ahead uh, for Kevin shots. Really, uh, they want to make sure. Like we got rocks in play, but he's got to make sure that he has a shot for his last one. And so they're going to try to reposition the rocks and, and get in a situation where where he knows that he's going to have a shot for what he wants to be uh, a big multiple end. But uh, right now, a couple red rocks are really raising havoc for him, so they're going to have to figure out what to do with him. And again, we see the whole team on the communication here. Uh, without them having uh, all these uh, events, there's no clock, so there's no time frame. Uh, so the, the, a lot of teams will, will get the whole team to, to talk about the strategy and, and uh, make communication, but just like anything else, the more people you add, the more choices there are and uh it leads to a little bit longer game so they're gonna talk through this one and see if they can come up with a, a, a solution that they all like and 
that buy in and looks like they figured it out. So Tyler will go down and we're going to see the call quickly here. That's right. Put your clocks away. We're on Cooey time. After all that discussion, if only we were there. Looks like possibly a double peel here. Yeah, a double peel, but what'll be interesting is that red will probably run into the house too. So it'll be interesting to see what what all touches each other here. There's Tyler Tardy. They don't like it at the beginning. It was a little outside, but it looks like he's successfully got it. And that's just gonna spin through and I basically that's the again what I was talking about earlier is Kevin's thinking ahead going I gotta make sure that I have a shot in here yes we're not looking good right now but I gotta make sure that there's an open front and now both sides and that's quite a high guard so now he can maneuver from for from his out turn and his in turn so there'll be more choices when Kevin comes to throw So yeah, with that shot being made, things look a little clearer now as they're looking to put a couple more points on the bar board and take massive control of this game. Now, it looks like John Epping is just sitting the one there on the side of the forefoot, but he does really have rocks in good places. And now with that double peel being made, there is a double on the Epping Stones. And now he's, yeah, he's got to find a place to, you know, hide or, or prevent a double or even a triple. Yeah, so this is an interesting situation. Uh, what you'd normally see is people would run out and throw a guard up. Um, but... Uh, you'd have to be careful where you put the guard and I'm not saying the guard isn't to play still uh, they might throw a tight one up there half and half just to avoid that double opportunity um, but uh, most likely he'll probably draw in to try to tap or it looks like he's just going to draw to the top and see if he can uh, create some jam opportunity there and, and take away that double opportunity that uh, you had pointed out there Matt what I call the Mickey Mouse. No one else ever calls it that, but uh, <laughs> freezing on two stones. That will not catch on. <laughs> yeah, and at this time, I just another shout out to uh, Curling Stadium for the, the coverage and the, and the curling zone. Um, it's just it's just amazing that so many people from all over can see, even in the club rank, I'm glad that we took part of it and I think the number one fan out there is Megan Edwards, so a big shout out to her. She's uh, she's on all of them, and, and boy, she just loves watching all this curling. So hopefully she enjoys this show. Looks like uh, Bing's right where he wanted. There's your Mickey Mouse. There you go. We're in Disney World now. So yeah, that takes away a couple shots, and it certainly clutters up draw paths and, and options there. The double is certainly gone. And now we're back to Kui time. I have a feeling that we're going to be here for a little bit on this one. Um, I don't see an automatic call other than trying to get into that one on the uh, that's touching that he's looking at the top one, but almost if he came a lightweight to try to get that one on the edge of the forefoot and come in but he's really looking at this one up top and setting up for his last shot so this is definitely showing some patience for sure yeah you would be tempted to go right at shot stone because even yeah, if you were to nose it or even roll a couple inches you would be sitting too and the double would not be the easiest thing in the world yeah, and it's still edge on edge, or even better than edge on, or from our angles, it's edge on edge anyway. So that would give him room to get in there, but uh, he's 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 gonna make sure that uh, that he has some shots. So he's gonna just maneuver some rocks around and punch that through the hole. 
but I imagine we'd see John uh, draw right back in there. But I mean, we'll, we don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. So we'll wait to see what they come up with here. update while Kevin Cooey unveils his master plan. Uh, Team Gauthier is now up to a 4 nothing lead on Rylan Clyder. The winner of this game, by the way, would play the winner of that game, and it would be a very interesting rematch uh, if Kevin Cooey were to win this game, go on to win, and play Team Gauthier, because that was their single loss of this event. Yes, the Gothay team, they've been uh, very strong, playing really good. They're playing against a really strong team right now, the Young Clyder team, which will have a lot of fans. They're, uh, they're just out of junior and, and uh, Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan team and uh, very exciting to watch. Uh, fantastic with upweight shots and things like that. So, um, but they're, good. They're, they're in pretty deep, that Gothay team. They're playing really strong here. Back to this game, Tyler Tardy, looking like he is going to just take out the stone that's hurting him the most. And that would be that one in the middle there, and that is gone for good. Certainly a setup shot. And now there's a big discussion. They uh, they know they have to bring another one in. Um, they have to figure out obviously that the guard is still there. That's an option. Uh, difficult to throw a guard into that specific spot. Uh, so by the looks of all uh, indications so far, uh, they're not interested in trying to cover that up. They're trying to figure out how do we get another one in without setting up a double. Because remember, if you give uh, Kevin any sort of inclination that he can uh, take a couple of years out in one swipe, he's, he's definitely going to go for it, and <laughs> typically he makes it. Anyone who's watched five minutes of the Briar knows that that's something that he's very good at and has done for several years. So. Yes, I was talking earlier, uh, the team game against Team Waycock, uh, was it just a, a dynamite first end? Both teams played so well, and the Rocks were back and forth, and it looked like one of those just typical ends. And then Kevin made two unbelievable doubles in a row and scored five out of nowhere. So uh, he just loves to set them up and he loves the big shot at the end. So uh, he'll be looking for that here. And John is going to try his best to, to make sure that he can move these rocks around and, and get some separation. Well... I don't know if that was the intended weight call, but he is now sitting two. Yes, he, he was trying to come down to that back one, uh, which surprised me a little bit too with the separation because this is about a three quarters of a rock slash double um, that might catch the back yellow one a little bit, but with his weight and the way he throws it, uh, he could shoot those both out of there and leave an opening. Yes, John could draw around again, but uh, he's going to really look at this because uh, he, he knows he can make that shot, but he's allowing John in with the draw. So he might try to make a move in and just try to create a, a deuce opportunity rather than a big end. And this is all about knowing your opponent, knowing what they're going to do. Like I said before, they've played 52 times according to Curling's own stats since 2011. There's going to be no surprises. Yeah, and you can see they're, they're, they're explaining the two benefits of the shots that I was just mentioning. The, the first time they looked at, okay, let Kevin put down, let's just hit that one on the side of the four and roll under. And then both of them looked at that angle of, hey, we can just run these and get rid of both of these right now. And now they're just trying to figure out the benefits of both and uh, what that'll leave John for his last shot. So there you can see the indication again, he's looking at that. He knows he can make that, but he 
is that the best shot at this point or do they get in for shot rock right there a really good discussion all four are at it and we, we knew there'd be some discussion this end with so many rocks in play again we're not limited. using time clocks here so they're allowed to take yeah, I was say, time. <laughs> limited timeouts here and uh this is the i would say the third maybe fourth as uh, you might call it a confab in the house. It looks like they are going to... Jeff, go with your call. It's looking for the slash double on the two reds. Possibly. No, I don't think so. I think that they're going to, with that ice. I think they're coming down with bumper weight, and they're just going to try to do a hit and roll underneath. But uh, I, I think if they're going with the slash, they'd have tighter ice and, and more weight, so... Um, I think they're just going for the hit roll, but see the shot they wanted to avoid all uh, end. Yeah. And yeah. they're gonna take another time out here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A lot of hesitation here. Again, this is a quarterfinal match. You win, you keep playing. And again, with Kevin Cooey having Hammer and the lead, they don't need a bunch of points. They, they're looking for their two. And even a one is not awful. But they just want to make sure they get this right. Yeah, and if you give Kevin the opportunity to think about it, he's going to think about it. Now, now they're going to go back to the shot that I first mentioned that uh, I thought they would do is just come down and hit this hard and, and get the, the slash double and uh, count on his last rock. So little changing of the minds and it, it would be awesome if uh, we had the players mic so we could find out exactly those thought processes. But uh, here we go, gonna be a big shot. Kevin loves okay. these. So after all of that discussion, Kevin Cooey throws us first. Looking for a double. Brad going hard. Perfect. He just makes it wonderful without disturbing anything on the ice there. And terrific shot. Now they're sitting two, possibly three. Now this is a pretty straightforward shot for John. I know it doesn't look great for him uh, by any means uh, with yellow sitting two now. Uh, but he just threw this shot, uh, so they know what the ice does. Um, I'm kind of surprised. I thought they'd take a little bit more because he was a little heavy last time. He bumped the rock back, and he just needs an exact freeze here to avoid a double uh, right back at him. So um, hopefully he's calculated enough for this and gets it all the way out to the broom because uh, otherwise this, this could overcrew on. But looks like he definitely got it out there far enough. Now they're going to try their best to freeze this on there. Uh, they don't want any separation. They they need to lock granite on granite here. Going hard at it. All right, even though that shot rock, uh, I'll tell you right now that uh, Kevin's going to be eyeballing that nose double. And that would be, oof, could be upwards to five points if he makes it. Right, like you said before, he's had a five ender already here, and so he's got the taste for blood. So would you take so that on? It might be actually he can see. I'm not sure if he can see a quarter of the rock, but they're also talking about the pick shot here, Matt, and they're trying to figure out if that uh, back one is sit for three. So if he could just come down and instead of having to make the tough double, uh, looks like they indicated that they think that the uh, red his third shot so if they did pick it out it would only be for two which is still great that's what you're kind of going for or they could try the big shot for a big multiple end but uh there's not a lot of room to play with there so we'll see what uh kevin likes the look of uh, most likely yeah. we're going to see the pick option here but uh like i said uh, kevin's not afraid of the big shot so either one are difficult, but either one he'd take on. Looks like it's going to go with a pick. 
And then there will be a measurement, I'm pretty sure of that. Uh, from our angle, I almost would have said yellow was the third shot. So um, I think we're going to see the pick opportunity and then we might see the measuring stick come out. Well, whether it's two or three, that'd be mission accomplished for Kevin Cooey, as this was a very back and forth end. And this pick being, considering who's throwing it, there's a lot of that rock peeking out from what we can see. So, Kevin Cooey's last. Looking to hit what he can see of the red. This is a lightweight pick, Matt. Uh, normally we see some smoke coming down, but he felt he needed the need to to control the weight so he could control the sweep a little bit. And I he think he's... Had to touch it oh, no. He doesn't. He touches it, but not enough. So keep that measuring stick right where it's at, and that's going to be a steal of one for John Epping. After all that, so we're halfway through, and Kevin Cooley is now going to keep the hammer and now be tied 2-2. Two to two. Hey, wake up. There's so much out there to see. Look up. Look down. Quick, look over there. Look for a little trouble, but not too much. Open your eyes to something new every day. The hustle, the bustle, the calm, the serene. Maybe then you'll see that sometimes you have to go far to get a little closer. So wake up. The day is far from over. Seize the days. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Halfway done here, the IG Wealth Management Western Showdown quarterfinal matchup between Team Cooey and Team Epping. And Jeff, we just watched a very, very interesting fourth end where Cooey lo looks like he had a chance for a very precise double for a bunch of points. He didn't take it, went with a pick shot, was a little wide, and he gave up a steal. Yes, it was one of those ends that uh, Kevin loves to play. Um, lots of rocks in play. He likes to set up for a big shot at the end. And uh, one of the rare times he just didn't quite uh, hit what he, he needed to see. And uh, yeah, give up a steal of one. But there's big opportunities there that uh, for it was probably three. We weren't quite sure, but uh, I guess we're going to never know now. But uh, definitely the rocks were in play and, and the opportunity was there. And uh, one of the few misses that we see from Kevin Cooey, and, and uh, all of a sudden there's a steal instead of a big end. Absolutely no shot is a given, but we have ourselves a tie game. Another setup chance here for Team Cooey to... He would love to blank, but a lot of stuff in the center, so... He's going to do what he can to try to keep this wide open. So Kevin deciding to make it a little more open too. You'll see that uh, normally you'd see the corner guard go up instead, but he decided to bring that right in and 
and John's going to ignore that. He's not going to want to chase out there, and and uh, so he's going to try to still clog up the middle and see if again, just like last time, there's a lot of yellows around, and John was very patient, and he only had to hide one rock, and and he managed to keep that there. So uh, might see a lot of the same strategy here from John, where he shows a lot of patience and gets a lot of rocks into play, and just trying to hide one. They're absolutely playing a lot better than they did in the first couple ends as we have a sort of a corner freeze there. Just a little deep by a couple inches. Yeah, the guys have definitely bounced back uh, in their percentages. The first couple ends, they really struggled to get their rocks in the right spot. But you can see the whole team is comfortable throwing the, the difficult shots now and the precise shots. And so that leads for what's probably going to be a very exciting last four ends of the, this quarterfinal matchup tonight. So Brad Thiessen being asked to hit as much of the red as possible, might take out their own yellow. I think they'd mind. So that's shot well done. Did that... Uh, other one stick around? It's hard to see from our camera angle, but it's going to be fair. Oh, just rolled out on him. Looked like it was going to hang on for a bite there for a moment. Yeah, almost a wonderful result, but all the same, the house is wide open. Team Cooey. Tried to hang on for dear life, but it still gets to stay in the game. is one of my least favorite shots is hitting something way out in the wings. Yeah, you never take anything for granted when you go out that far in what we call the wings, and uh, you're never sure what it's it's going to do. It Just like this one, it can just take off all of a sudden or stay straight, oh. but boy, they managed to... That's a plan B in action right there. <laughs> over curls the original shot. Double tick and then roll over and now sitting two and all of a sudden now Kevin's going to go into cleanup mode and even though there's three red rocks now, we, I would not be surprised with the way this set up now that we're not going to see a blank end after all this. Oh, an absolutely wonderful result if that was not the call. You can always tell people it was. All the same. <laughs> It's a lot of times when the teams look at each other and they give the old sorry face. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely, I know in club curling, uh, we had that happen to us the other night. We were playing our Super League, and and uh, I had the end set up pretty nice. I was calling the, the uh, I was in the skip's role, and the other skip come down and completely missed the shot and tick wick and next thing you know just absolutely buried mm. and, and she just looked over and said sorry and i said oh my god it's fine if we didn't play for plan b's we wouldn't play curling so uh it's like if if we only got plan a's to work uh well then we'd we'd be curling with these guys and and they don't always make their shots so that's just part of the game uh just got to bounce back and and go at it and it is part of the game, but the thing is, Jeff, it's a part of my game too, and it's like the part of the game that I have. It's, if they get you that rely move, on it. <laughs> it feels like you got everything else. You got that. You got the brawn. You got the intellect. You got the looks. You, and then me, I want something. I, all I have is that. <laughs> and they get those two, but all the same, um, it does happen, and you know that's. Absolutely. Everyone everyone agrees it's just something you deal with and you live with it. And so it's, it's Absolutely. Been... Well these guys again, like they, they might miss the odd shot, but as you see just like this, just so fine tuned shooting and just they're just so good at what they do and and uh, thanks to, to C B C who's also uh, carrying curling now on C B C sports app. But uh, CBC just did a special lately with the uh, Olympic swimmers and uh, seeing how they would do in curling for the first time. And, and so you're taking Olympic athletes 
putting them on curling ice for the first time. And it was, uh, let's just say it was very entertaining to watch um, how difficult a game this really is. And, and uh, it, the, the, fans, the fans realize that the people that are here, um, a lot of them have curled in the past and they realize how much it takes to get such a precise shot from this uh, 45 pound piece of granite that you throw down and you're trying to stop it in a, a dime sized area. It's, it's pretty amazing what these guys do and, and uh, they do it week in and week out. And it's just, uh, it's just great to watch. Yeah, it really is here. So if you look at this game here, Team Epping is controlling the house as they've got rocks separated pretty nicely. Shot stone is mostly open. Tyler Tardy is going to try and hit. And Whoa. oh, he just got a little feather off that guard. Yeah, Again, they thought it they thought it needed to curl and they jumped on the corner sweep and and next thing you know, it jumped on him a little bit too much and they just couldn't hold that and actually got a little ricochet. It went off the back of the stone literally and and uh, still got a half shot out of it. But now Kevin's going to be uh, facing a couple of red rocks. So could be the force is on. And, and uh, at this point, uh, John would be very, very happy with that. Yeah, force of one would give Epping the hammer in the even ends and only be down one. That's, that's a really good position. That'd be taking the hammer away, essentially, from the first end. So we have John Epping's first. Hit and stay. That's all he needs here. They're pretty happy with this. Just a nice little light clean. They're going for a little bit of hit and roll now. Trying to roll get back. a great behind there. And what a precise shot, oh. just what we're talking about. Now, see, that's so, the called and made. That's what we expect from them. We make, they make the shots that they call. None of this accidentally wick off something and take out two that were completely undercover. It's a really nice shot there. Yes, uh, Kevin has to be pretty precise with this one now. Yeah, that was a fantastic roll. That was that was a hundred percent. And if there's bonus marks allowed, that would get the bonus. They don't give bonus points out a lot in percentages. It's always just four out of four. Well, shots like that, I, I'm I'm putting in that there's a bonus. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna give them one today, Matt. I I think we should, and I want you grading my games as well. <laughs> Cooey's first. Just trying to dig it out there. That wonderful shot by John Epping. Sweepers aren't touching it so far, so it's got the weight. They're just figuring out the line. Now they're going to get on it. To Kirk's going to try to get this moving as much as they can. There's the the new token backwards moving sweeping there by by Bradley Thiessen. Just a new technique some of the teams are using uh, to try to get the extra curl. Now that is a don't try this at home move if I've ever seen one. <laughs> but it did poke it out a little bit. It is not shot stone, but it is something that John Epping is going to have to deal with. If he can sit this right on the nose, he's going to be in pretty good shape covering up that button. Absolutely. He's on this early. He's trying to hold this straight. Yeah, this is curling. It's going hard. He's got to get by the guard. Oh, oh he just tickles it. Is he going to get anything of it? No. So that is a miss. And after controlling this entire end, looking like a force, Kevin Cooley looking to figure out how to score a second. The guard did move over an inch or two, making the hit and stay a little harder. 
Yeah, this is more of a question of the weight that he wants. He knew the shot. Uh, he can see probably half a rock from his angle in the house. Uh, but it is a pretty long guard. It's a halfway or better known as a, a, a placement of two for the guard. So there's lots of room to get around. So he's just going to go with a comfortable weight here. I assume with that ice, it's looking like hack. You could even throw back house, really, just to move it to back this. just on the T-line. Yeah, so they would have had a good conversation on the weight just to make sure that they can control uh, with the sweepers a little more. The, the less weight you throw, the more the sweepers can be impactful for, for making it curler. So he's going to come down with a comfortable weight here and see if he can bounce back with his deuce. Hammer has been thrown. He jumped on this one a little early too, so Carrick's going to try real hard to to hold the line on this one. We see He's another also miss curling. here. Not going to get by. Yes, it does. He's got to get by the other one, and still, and he there did great sweeping. The red face showed how much effort he put into that one. <laughs> and Kevin Cooey bounces back with a deuce on that and moves up by two going into the sixth end. We asked Saskatchewan what they know about 5G. Uh, more speed, more innovation. It's gonna make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. This is what 5G looks like. Better, faster. Sounds like one more G. Sounds pretty good. I don't know what it means. All you really need to know is the future of 5G is here and will continue improving through investments in network technology. Here now in the sixth end, the IG Wealth Management Western Showdown in Swift Current, Saskatchewan, quarterfinal round. Game between Team Cooey and Team Epping. I'm Matt Sussman, and Jeff Chambers is alongside me. And Jeff, we just saw a rather open end, just a miss by John Epping on his last lead to a two out of nowhere for Team Cooey. Yeah, it was one of those ends that uh, that went so well for Epping right, right till the very last shot. Uh, looked like he was going to put on a real hard force, if not a steal opportunity. And then uh, just a, a slight miss either on the line or the, the line call. And uh, next thing you know, they just racked on the front just ever so slightly and, and give the opportunity for a two rate back. So... Uh, the last couple ends have been quite up and down and, and uh, lots happening and 
it just shows you got to pay attention right to the very last stone because how fast things can change in this game it's it's uh it's pretty crazy so with that end you got to put that out of your mind if you're team epping and they've just thrown two corners stacked on top of each other and team cooey just content with loading up the center of the house looking like they're gonna possibly use the corners here yeah, the strategies over the last couple of years have changed ever since they've gone to the uh, five rock free guard zone. And because uh, normally you would see an automatic uh, guard, most teams would put it out front. Um, but then they know, like Kevin knows that John wants to use those two corners bad. So if they can get half around them now, you're almost taking those two guards away from them for a little while. So it's definitely a strategy a lot of teams are going to. Uh, a little different than what you think and this one unfortunately uh just Bradley got this one outside a little bit so uh, didn't quite get to where they want to so that'll give the opportunity for for John probably to use that stone now and he has choices here so he's looking at uh making the double right now and then sit behind the yellow one he could also come down and do a draw tap and and uh, set up behind those two corners so a couple options here he's gonna freeze actually on the middle so didn't go with his first two choices, going with the third one. That might have been a suggestion from the front end that they wanted to see this. So they're just going to throw a freeze to the middle and get the red rocks into play. That was very nice of John Epping to show us all of the possibilities for everyone watching at home and then landing on this decision as well. So Absolutely. Um, I, didn't e I didn't even need the teleprompter on that one. So <laughs> It's like you two were in cahoots on that. Yeah. I guess I've played enough and uh, watched enough of these that uh, you kind of get a good idea of what uh, what the skips are thinking. Freeze attempt here by Patrick Jansen. Going to get a little bit of finish at the end. That is made. Great shot. It didn't take uh, Kevin too long to decide to get up there. That's. Uh, Fastest I've seen him move in a long time. He's zipped up there, so <laughs> we're gonna look for a freeze and, and start cleaning out some stuff out front. As fast as one of his own stones. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Yep, feel is made. One more rock out of play. John looking for another Another spot to hide a red stone somewhere. But those kind of angles, we might see him freeze rate another one right on top of it or just do a, uh, yeah, I was going to say, probably a, uh, a play onto that corner. A couple of options there. It's edge on edge. So and there's the first option I had mentioned that he might want to do, just freeze on top of there. So he's going to have a look at his options, have a little talk with the front end, see what they think. Looks like they're going to utilize that corner that they have. And one good one with this first. See if Patrick Jansen can freeze another. Curl on this one. The curl gets a little bit of a bounce more than they wanted. That bounce enough, you can't get them both. No, it's a natural double, but there's definitely the jam on the outside yellow. If it doesn't jam too much, he might rip this anyways, even though he might lose that uh, that yellow one. He might not care if he can get both red ones. Just depends how it comes off that one on the edge of the forefoot. Yeah, even just to unlock it and then put both reds out of uh, commission here.
Again, the goal here, Team Cooey, you want to get rid of as many reds as you can and uh, force them to one here. Yeah, he's not worried about losing the one on the edge of the forefoot here. He's fine on that. Looks like it's... Oh, this was thrown quite a bit outside. This is uh, a little bit of a miss there. He uh, must have been on that release to, to, to miss on the outside of the rock there. Because he, Kevin did not have much ice for him, and, and that definitely will curl up there. So must have been just a little outward release. He's a little shocked at that one right now. And, um, yeah, let's see what what John does with that little bit of a miss and where he's going to position this one, probably try another corner freeze. Yeah, that's looking like what the call is here. Matt Cam can get an even better frozen rock there. <laughs> it's quite funny if you're watching close enough. John's broom snuck from the center line over and over and over. I think he kept thinking, boy, we need more ice. And Matt was already <laughs> into the slide and the broom kept moving. I'm like, wow, that's, uh, that would take some concentration right there. So we always have new sweeping strategies. I don't know if there's new line calling strategies. <laughs> there, it looks yeah, like so they've got run. an absolute beauty here. So yeah. here's another one of those four to four with the five point bonus. <laughs> always want a generous grader there. Well, I might have been a little hard on the Epping team in the first couple ends with their percentages, <laughs> as uh, yeah. I uh, mentioned. So, you know what, now that they're they're putting them in some great spots, we got to make sure that uh, I kind of make up for it a little bit. And could we motioning for the double, like we said before, the red that he'd hit wouldn't go anywhere, but the Second shot, red, certainly would go to the boards. Chance of redemption here for Tyler. Right out of hand again. This definitely has some steam on it. We're going to see some move. Made a nice One double instead of two. That's a really, really good bounce back shot there. And where that rolls, that is under cover. That is covering the button and they are now sitting too. So John's just calling for a nice hit and roll here. You, you would see some teams be tempted to throw back and almost have an opportunity to triple off just inside nose if you threw enough weight. You could definitely move a lot of rocks around, but uh, he's choosing to just go for the hit and roll. I think he was had a little look there, but he's going to stick with the, his original call where he just wants to hit and try to roll in behind the corner and see if he can deal with those ones on the center line afterwards. Yeah, like you like you mentioned before, it's all about thinking ahead. It's not all about trying to make that one shot that looks really nice. You want to set yourself up and score that multiple. This is very close to being a great, great shot. Got the roll and just spun out. I don't know if he's too worried about spinning it right out right now. Kevin's going to look if that's a, a factor to deal with that rock right now or if he wants to deal with the one on the back of the four or if he wants to try to cover up those ones in the center. So a couple options. And again, every uh, one thing about curling, there's no one strategy that works for everybody. We see a lot of different skips and a lot of different teams play uh, much different games from one another. Uh, it's just what they're comfortable doing. And, and uh as long as if you win at the end of it or if you make your shot and it works, I guess you did the right strategy. That is certainly one of the things they tell you when anyone is trying to learn curling strategy. Typically, there is one way to do it. You think there's one way to do it, and then you learn, oh, there's like five ways to do it, and I'm going to tell you one of them, and you might not like the way I do it. But 
It's all about what you're comfortable with. Absolutely. You bet. Uh, we'll see a lot of times on the chat, people put comments in about what they should have done or whatever. And, and you're right. Uh, that could have been a great call. It's just, but it all depends on that team and what they're comfortable in playing it. They want to play it open. If they want to play it safe, if they want to gamble, you mentioned it earlier, John Epping, he loves to see rocks and play. He's, he's a gambler and uh, that, that can work out for you. You get the right rock hidden. Evan Cooey just going for the open hit, keeping it simple. And now he is still sitting two with a uh, chance here for John to make the double and sit two himself, but it's going to be very difficult to avoid a, a prevented double somewhere wherever his rock lands. Yes, that's a good point. He could come down right now and make that double with his intern and roll over, but a uh, good chance that he would leave a, uh, a double right back. So he's, he's trying to get hit one of the yellows out and then just get a roll behind those, those corners to avoid any kind of double. And he's, he's going for a big end still. It's not needing to curl a lot. It's going to hit on the wrong way. Get one out and then roll as far as it can, and that is not what he was looking for. No, that caught him again, Matt. Uh, they, that was a sweeping error on that one uh, between Matt and John. They just uh, Matt was trying to get it to uh, to curl up more, and uh, yeah, you can see the frustration on his face there. Um, he was calling for the curl, and they needed to curl less to get more of a roll now. We, we leave a half half stone uh, or quarter stone uh, double for Kevin here to sit three. So things can change so fast. And you can see the frustration by Matt there. Just just missed the line call there. And, and uh, those little mistakes can really come back and haunt you. And it was going okay for team Epping. They, they weren't quite in position with the rocks they wanted, but now Kevin's going to try to clear all the red in the house here with one stone. It's very nice, clean out of his hand, and another clean shot, and just out of nowhere, we've got three yellow ones, so. That's going to leave a open hit for a single. Force is on. That's going to put John Epping in a, a position that he is comfortable with in terms of needing to steal, but it's even more so. He is going to have to find some way, somehow, to score without hammer. So that was his last shot here in the sixth. They like it right now, so... Good solid throw to bounce back and get their single and down by one with two ends to go. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. If our houses are painted or are they logo, our events are always painted houses. But in the future, coming out, I'm pretty sure we're going to be going to all logo houses. 
Uh, they're a great revenue source for any curling club. You can get your advertisements on there. And usually after the first year, the houses are paid for it's all free money for you so hopefully check it check jet ice out for your future in-house look the roaring game we all love it but sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. Go get stuck in your curling club this year. Learn the game inside and out. Play for your favorite country and take the curling world by storm. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. We're now here in the seventh end of the IG Wealth Management Western Showdown quarterfinal game between Kevin, Team Kevin Cooey and Team John Epping. Epping scoring one in the sixth, which is about one fewer than he wanted. He is now trailing and without hammer. So Matt Sussman here along with Jeff Chambers. And Jeff, John Epping does have a lot of work to do. Absolutely. This is going to be a big uphill battle, uh, being down one without to Kevin Cooey. Uh, this has been a back and forth action between both teams and uh, just a couple misses here and there uh, between the, the teams. And, and it seems to be big point swings. Um, I don't know if uh, Kevin's going to let so many rocks into play this end, uh, being one up. So it'll be interesting to see how many rocks do get into play and how many situations we get into um as we near the end of this game but uh it's a tight race so far and and john will be doing everything he can to get rocks up front and then uh hopefully hide some and we're gonna see some some corner freezes some um draw behinds we uh this whole end so we'll we'll see what how he wants to uh to handle it here but uh i can tell you one thing it's going to be very exciting and we're going to see some great shots coming home here We've seen a lot of them already. We've had our money's worth here from probably the third end onward has been just end after end of really nice shots, really interesting ends and angles. And uh, Patrick Jansen here, like you said, looking for a freeze. Looks like that is the call here. Trying to glue it onto one of those two yellow stones. One of the things that we'll see different here, Matt, too, with this game is both skips are ready to throw the rocks into play, uh, ready to take it right to the last shot. Um, because we, we normally will see a lot of games, especially when we're watching uh, the slams, that we, we see so many blank ends now. And uh, as you can see, we only had one, and that was in the first end. And, and uh, these guys are not afraid to go after it and they try to get the, the multiple points. And it just shows how hard it is because we've only had uh, two ends that were multiple points so far this game, even though there's been lots of rocks in the play. Yeah, we have a made peel there just barely, but just enough. Yeah, a little smile went back there, <laughs> just enough to, to, to catch it and knock it out. Uh, the fans have been enjoying a great show. Um, they, they appreciate that there's lots of rocks in play. Um, it's, uh, it uh, can get kind of boring if there's only a few sh rocks in play and it's just basically take out, take out and, and then blank end. Uh, the people love to see the angles. They love to see the situations. Uh, there's so many people at home trying to figure out, well, this is what I would do, and I think this is what they should do. And, and that's the kind of conversation that uh, gets the excitement around curling and, and keeps it interesting, and, and it's a talking point. Uh, you can definitely talk strategy when it comes to curling. That's right. Everyone has their own opinion. You can be the armchair skip. It really lends itself to that. Even if you don't know a lot about it, you end up, you know, I do so many uh, instruction clinics at our club and people who are new that come in just talk about how they find the game and after half hour of watching they go from not knowing what's going on to then not only knowing what's going on but then having opinions about what should be going on. 
Absolutely. And there is a nice panorama view there for, from the camera showing that the, uh, not only is the downstairs full and it's hard to see downstairs, but the upstairs was completely full, all the seating and, and uh, what you don't see there is in behind, they have large screen TVs. Every sheet has a TV going on. Uh, thanks to the uh, Sastel Curling Stadium and uh, the Curling Zone, They're, the games are uh, right across on every sheet. Uh, so they can see the instant replays as they needed. Um, it's just a, it's a great setup, and, and uh, the, the locals and all of South, Southwest Saskatchewan so happy that uh, the IG Wealth Management is back, and uh, we just like to thank, uh, definitely, like I said, I've mentioned it many times, but Sastel Curling Stadium and the Curling Zone and CBC Sports coverage uh, for their online viewing as well. It's, it's just been just been awesome to have so many people around the world and and some of the games I've done I've, I've reached out there and find out where everybody's from and it's just amazing how people are all around the world are just enjoying what's happening right here in my home community and uh, that, that makes me pretty proud uh, Swift Current's a pretty pretty great place and our slogan is where life makes sense and um, I can tell you I, I showed up for a job here that was supposed to be only six months long and that was 22 years ago and <laughs> still here wow. so great community and and uh we we love our curling and uh and our hockey i was at a, a hockey game today and watching our billet uh kids play with the, the legionnaires for a win there so it's it's just been a great day of action for me today so i'm pretty excited to be here excellent i was gonna say going back to the tvs are we also and we have over a thousand views here on the uh on the on the live stream but are they able to hear us as well our commentary in the club uh they turn those ones down they're just live viewing thanks to the curling oh, stadium so they're always showing but you'll notice a lot of people in the in the crowd they have their phones and their earphones and uh so that they can listen to it and i notice a lot of the coaches do that the, the coaches that were here with the teams um that they put the uh the earphones in and and they're listening to that commentary so that they can they obviously want to know what we're talking about, Matt, right? So, <laughs> Oh, well, I was going to say, it's, it's probably very smart that they turn the volumes down on the big screens. But um, <laughs> I was just thinking maybe with all the people there, they should start doing the wave. Oh, wow. Well, that, that would be something to do. If, if Chris Eichert's in the building, which he is, and Chris Eichert's a, a big reason. He played with Team Laycock here. Uh, they unfortunately lost just, uh, just before this going into the quarterfinals. But um, he's so active up there. We've had the cool shots going and, and uh, so much action off the ice. And uh, I know if, if you challenge, if, you, if we can get a hold of him, I, I bet you he'd get all those uh, fans to do the wave. <laughs> or at least they'd wave. <laughs> That's I was going to say, if they don't know what that is, <laughs> they just wave. <laughs> we'd probably just see a lot of waves. <laughs> uh, classic miscommunication. Anyways, let's talk about this end here. We've got a really interesting setup here. All the rocks there in play are in the house. Epping looking to steal, but uh, they're only sitting, actually they're not sitting anything. Kevin Cooley's sitting too. Yeah, there's going to be some neat angles. The, the guys are going to start taking some serious looks at this and figuring out how to maneuver it for, for the last shot or to avoid a, a multiple scoring end. So. Even though uh, Kui's sitting two right now, um, he is not comfortable with those red rocks and how they're positioned. Uh, John Epping uh, might be looking at two right now, but uh, he's sitting really well with where his rocks are located right now. Yeah, not a lot of them are easy to remove right now. Certainly the rock that's just biting top four is going to stay there for a little while, but all the same, looks like... He's just going to throw some smoke at this. Yes, I promise you things will look different after this throw. Tyler Tardy. Get at least one red out. As they fly and just about everything goes. And so that certainly cleaned things up. Now, you might say, oh, well, now, now red is shot after... After being uh, sitting two, now the other team's sitting one, but I'm sure they feel a lot better now that that is way less congested. Oh, absolutely. 
That was a lot of rocks in a tight space. Guessing he's calling a guard here. He must be. I'm, I was trying to process if I missed a shot because I was pretty sure he still has two shots left. Oh no, this is his last shot. So yeah. So yes, he would be playing a straight guard. But again, it's it's uh, out there with the swinging ice. This is a very tough shot. I know everybody's like, oh, I just throw a guard on it. But to throw a precise enough guard out on this ice that swings so much, it's Gotta be so precise, and I think he's done a pretty good job. He's showing a, definitely showing enough there to that he'll be able to hold a shooter. I think that was his first because I think Tyler just threw the preceding shots. Well, that's what I was pretty sure of. I just couldn't see it in the background there, oh. so I was not counting the rocks properly again. But uh, I was pretty sure of that, but I just couldn't see the other one there. Oh yeah. That would make a lot more sense. Otherwise, John would have just split the rings. Guard not quite where he wanted it to be. Cooley with a chance here to lay two. Looks like he's got a nice solid shot in here. He's almost going to get up to nose on it. He does just that. Lays open. Now this is this is where you got to be aggressive. This is not the third end. This is the seventh end. You need to steal. You can't give up two. You don't want him to blank. So just try to go somewhere where he has to either throw for one and looks like he's going for the freeze on the back one yeah this is a very tough shot there the, to to hide this rock is is first of all your first task is to hide the rock behind the red but then also if you go a little too far then it's a short angle run of his own yellow rock so not a lot of spots either you'd have to hide it right behind the red right beside the top yellow one or in the indication I think John's doing is he's going to draw down and try to get closer to that back one of a freeze. This is the critical shot of the game. John Epping needing to be shot, needing to be hidden somewhere. Sweeper's bringing this one in. Needs to be at least shot. Needs to be shot. Oh, I don't know if that is. It's undercover. It might be shot. He might need to make a play on it. Yeah, from the overhead from ours, it looks like red, but I know we've been fooled before. Uh, the can be some of an optical illusion, but yeah, it looks like he's pointing at red thinking it's red. They're going to have a really good look at this, though. Because if they don't have to make a play on it, then they would simply just draw for their second point but yeah that's again one of the one of those little idiosyncrasies of the game is you, you sometimes don't know when you have to operate under assumptions i can't think of many other sports that have that little quirk but you have to trust what you see and make your decisions from there yeah, it sure looks like red uh, Red is shot, but I mean, they've had a closer look. They they believe it's going to be red, so they're going to come down there with a, enough weight to try to punch that through the hole and score their deuce. There is not a lot of room to work with, though. Um, I know John wishes that he would have got that, you know, a couple inches more, um, which would have been great, but uh, kind of came to an abrupt stop on him there. So Kevin Cooey looking to find the hole, find enough of this red, and 
score a couple here, and that would give them a commanding lead in this game. Final stone is out of the hand. They're not jumping it. They want this to curl, so they feel it's out there a bit. Now they're getting straight, so this is a good sign that this is right on where the, they want to be if they're sweeping it that way. And looks like he's done a great job and punched it through the hole. And not only that, sat for three. So huge three-hander, and that's handshakes. Absolutely. So final score, Team Cooey 7, Team Epping 3. Kevin Cooey will move on play tomorrow morning against the winner of what will likely be Team Gautier against Team Kleider. Team Gautier up 7-3 to three in that game. That will be a rematch of uh, a the triple knockout game. But um, looking at this game, the score looked like it was lopsided. But, uh, Jeff, this was really, really a tight game from the first rocks. Well, absolutely. It was early handshakes, but there was nothing uh... – looking like early handshakes at any point of that game. It was a back and forth and just little mistakes on a couple different ends. Otherwise, there's big swings going either way. So a little heartbreak for Epping, and uh, they came out a little flat and, and bounced back, but uh, just didn't quite make it to the end there. Absolutely. Really good game. Please tune in uh, tomorrow morning for the semifinal matchups and the finals here on uh, Curling Stadium by uh, Curling Zone. This has been the quarterfinals of the IG Wealth Management Western Showdown alongside Jeff Chambers. My name is Matt Sussman. And I do want to thank you all for watching. <laughs>